uh, we have Mr. Melon Sampo from the Department of Local Governance. We requested him to speak on how uh, the good governance as a pillar of GNH is being applied by the government or how it is being, I guess, implemented here in the town. Um, and as I said, since um, we want to get to grassroots and today we want to take ideas into practical action, we thought it would be good to hear from him about his experiences. Uh, I have been given a few points to take heed uh, while mm -hmm. making this presentation. Uh, there are about five points. First is how does DLG, I put it DLG in the short form of Department of Local Governance, uh, reach out, try to engage people in the community. Uh, I have to give examples. And next is what has been done to enable better local empowerment, people's participation. Uh, third one is why is citizen participation necessary or how does it benefit your work? The fourth is what are the difficulties? And fifth, how could civic participation be better organized? So for now we have uh, local government sustainable development program. It's, uh, I think by any standard it's a very huge program uh, to the tune of uh, one billion uh, so it's in the process of uh, getting started. Uh, we also have uh, support for local governance, uh, funded uh, uh, singularly funded by uh, Helvetus as a suicide operation. <coughs> and this this project has a special component on civic uh, engagement, where we, uh, new initiatives are being undertaken at the moment. And we also do have a local government uh, decentralization pro project funded by Chaika. And this is at the verge of uh, closure by August. So all these pro programs, projects are designed to enhance good governance. So we are directly or indirectly trying to address uh, civic engagement. These are the uh, things that I want to spell out under what has TLG done to enable better local empowerment, people's participation. So, I'm proud to say that uh, we have made some groundbreaking uh, pilot uh, initiatives on citizen engagement uh, through one of the uh, social accountability uh, tools. Uh, we have uh, piloted three social accountability tools in Samchi, uh, Sarpang and Chiangwa. Uh, for the community scorecard, it's a very practical uh, way how we hold uh, people in position of power to be held accountable for the actions and how communities involved in the actual implementation or in the monitoring. So they actually they, they converge and they sort out solutions also. They bring out solutions and this is a very practical uh, uh, tool that we have adopted and we have piloted uh, this in Sarpa Georg. Uh, next is citizen report card. I'm sure most of you would be familiar with such uh, tools. This to gauge citizens' uh, uh, satisfaction of some services rendered by the uh, government. So it will be done through some kind of questionnaire and then survey uh, sort of thing. Uh, the next very, very important uh, initiative that we have taken is budget analysis and advocacy. To a majority of people, as of now, Budget has always remained uh, as a mystery. They have not been able to really know what is exactly there in the budget. Even if you are given a budget book, you don't uh, make any sense out of it. So we had challenges that, uh, in that manner and we just wanted to make a small initiative uh, to take that process forward. Uh, we tried to involve local community uh, representatives, uh, local government leaders, civil servants, then civil society organizations, media. So we want to drive this kind of new reforms in a very uh, <coughs> collaborative manner. And this we have done it in Japan uh, just recently. And uh, through those kind of activities, uh, which are training of trainers, we want to replicate uh, and have the multiply effect in the long run. So we are in the process of uh, developing new uh, activities, lines of activities to further uh, those kind of initiatives. Uh, 
these are some of the other things that we have done also. Uh, planning and prioritization. We want people's participation in the planning and prioritization. This is there as a principle of democracy or uh, in a good governance, uh, governance system as well. So we are following some kind of uh, a principle like uh, principle of subsidiarity uh, where things can be decided by the smallest unit of government or the individuals themselves. So there has been a, a training for the Kyok ATM officers, then local government GT, uh, Kyok the members, and we have trained quite a lot of them. Uh, for now, these things are being uh, taken up on a pilot basis, but in the future, uh, we want to roll out this to all the other Zongkals and Kyoks. Uh, one of the most uh, useful thing that we have also done is community facilitation. How our communities' views and uh, uh, their ideas uh, gathered. So this is being uh, uh, tackled through a training like uh, community facilitation. So our Gyeongsokbe members, our local council members, uh, Gyeong administrative officers are all trained to have this kind of skill to mobilize uh, community participation in the process of development. Uh, the next is also the basic engineering. For now, this has been the domain of the technical staff. Uh, we are not able to assess any uh, quality of uh, service or infrastructure because we are not technical persons. But now with this kind of training, we want to impart some kind of basic uh, skills to all the chaos of the members and some uh, community members as well, so that they have uh, certain say over the quality assurance. And project management, of course, uh, also involves uh, 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 topics and issues that involve uh, community participation. And these are major, uh, I mean, four of the major training programs that we have undertaken so far. And what would we be doing? Again, uh, as next steps from now, uh, we want to up upscale uh, these kind of initiatives and we want to carry out studies on effectiveness of these initiatives because uh, Bhutan's context uh, has been that we want to, we have been putting, putting in so much of resources, we have implemented so much of, uh, so many of new initiatives, but there have been very little done on monitoring and evaluation, impact assessments. So through these projects, we want to again do a study on the effectiveness of those initiatives. And uh, like today's uh, forum, we want to open up to more, more of policy discourse, mm -hmm. policy dialogues, and we want to keep sharing uh, whatever the things that uh, we are doing. And we also want to uh, keep uh, provide exposure trainings, study tours uh, to our local communities and community <coughs> members if things. Uh, things work out. Why is citizen participation necessary? How does it benefit our work? Uh, this is purely to draw legitimacy uh, because development cannot be forced upon people. Uh, they need to take part in the whole process, finding solutions, taking ownership, etc. And uh, we have rightly moved to this kind of governance system uh, as, uh, I mean, from the year 2000 two and one was, and uh, real democracy came in 2008. And this is uh, in recognition of this fact that people should come up with their own plans, should take ownership of their plans, not the government deciding for them. And uh, as I was saying one, uh, earlier, uh, principle of subsidiarity, we cannot prioritize things for themselves, so people uh, should do it. <clears throat> uh, as uh, we have always faced, uh, I mean, we, we run short of resources. Uh, our internal revenues don't even support uh, current costs, so we depend fully on uh, development partners, uh, donors for our capital expenditures, investments. So it's uh, necessary that uh, we converge, I mean, the recipients of services and the providers, they converse and discuss and have a way out to have a judicious use of resources.
and also it is to lessen uh, burden on the state apparatus uh, because government will never I mean government can not uh, cannot always take on the responsibility to firstly uh, build the infrastructure uh, provide services and later on also go for maintenance and so on and so forth so it is uh, best that people participate and know their roles so that they take uh, ownership uh, there are many uh, difficulties that we face uh, today uh, one of them uh, one of them being uh, shortage of resources although we might have very good ideas uh, and we want to go big uh, with things but uh, it is said that finance follows functions so whatever we want to do we need cash hard cash so it's very difficult and if uh, we are if we are I mean uh, ditched by our development partners we won't have any money to do the things that we want so for now we are dependent on the development partners with, uh, Holy. And uh, democracy has started uh, quite recently, uh, maybe now six years, and institutions are very young, we would like to say that. And uh, the kind of governance system hasn't taken uh, very I mean, deep roots just now. So we still want uh, more proactive actions from the government side to make these uh, institutions function. Uh, the other important uh, and most uh, critical challenge that we face is the capacity of duty bearers like ourselves, public officials, and also the right holders. Uh, in the morning, I guess, uh, there was an issue on people's uh, reluctance to show up for Zongdus. So they don't have uh, capacity in a way that uh, some households face uh, human resource shortages, uh, others they are busy uh, with their farm work and likewise some they do not uh, uh, make any sense out of the Zongdus and we have some challenges around, around that issue and uh, this is why we face uh, a technical challenge to session B. And also for any government uh, driven initiative to be fruitful uh, successful we need uh, political uh, will. And uh, it's not certain that uh, all the governments uh, will have the similar kind of view on people's participation. Uh, decentralization policy, one time it might be devolved, the other time it might be re-centralized. And this kind of uh, political uh, dynamics keep uh, happening. So again, uh, government uh, is not the only actor uh, in ensuring good governance. We want participation of all the key stakeholders like the CSOs, the media, and so on and so forth. But there are very much any, uh, complexities involved in the collaboration. How to go about, who initiates, and uh, which agency is quite the right thing to do, and whether if government alone drives that initiative, whether that would be a politically correct thing to do. And so on and so forth, we have so many complexities now. So how could civic participation be better organized? This is the last slide. So I won't bore you further. Uh, we thought uh, we would like to run more of awareness and sensitization programs. At the moment, uh, we have based uh, from our experience, based on our experience, uh, people at the grassroots, although they have so much of indigenous knowledge and all, but they do not uh, seem to have much uh, idea on the benefits of their participation and constructive engagement and whatever term, term we like to call it. And so we want to run more uh, awareness programs given the resources and uh, we would also like to uh, keep certain critical uh, skill transfers uh, such as uh, the one already done, like the budget advocacy. This keeps uh, certain uh, skill for the people to uh, make their own scrutiny of the budget and have more open public discussions. So these are very helpful, we thought, 
taking the budget in, uh, advocacy to the community levels because in case a government uh, makes a wrong investment on a very big project so that <coughs> fails project so who is, who is to be accountable and so on and so forth we want to uh, take that message to the people and now that we are in the era of uh, advanced technologies so we want to use uh, access the use of technology like internet we can have a platform where people share their opinions uh, so make use of the technologies uh, we also want to do some kind of work on research uh, that uh, focuses on what works and what does not, especially in respect of uh, civic engagement. Uh, we have few, uh, few activities already uh, on the cards uh, that we want to do it, uh, although on a very small scale. We want to find out the effectiveness, for example, the Zongdu village meetings participation of women in the decision making process at the local level and so on and so forth. And uh, like the forum today, I thought uh, we need to converge at more occasions than one or a very few. We want to go for more of uh, collaboration with the CSOs, media, private sector and many others and all the key stakeholders because governance uh, uh, government not alone uh, drive the big initiatives. We want uh, all the players to uh, take part uh, and over the long uh, period of time uh, we are committed uh, to make, uh, I mean, uh, to address good governance, especially through people's participation. So I think uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for your attention.